Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us, sentiment, mother T. Breaking news with integrity. So, sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely T TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely T TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers I hope you guys are doing good today. So I want to come on here and talk about all the drama that's going on with Cam Newton and his baby mama, Jasmine Brown. This has been going viral over the weekend. So if you guys do not know, uh, recently Cam Newton did a podcast with Corey Holcomb. And I did end up watching the entire podcast. And I was low-key waiting for when bits of the podcast would go viral because Corey was saying some crazy shit. You know what I'm saying? But that's Corey Holcomb. It's to be expected. Um, but one of the things that's going viral now, because this podcast came out a few weeks ago, is the conversation that he had with Corey about Jasmine Brown. So if you guys do not know, Jasmine Brown just had Cam Newton's, I think, eighth child. She's the comedian who went on that world tour talking about, you know, being a proud eighth baby mama. Y'all go ahead and check this out. So if y'all don't know... I'm the third one, and this is his sixth child. Mm. Someone said, ooh. <laughs> like, couldn't have been me. All right, so Larissa put that pressure on me. <laughs> All right, that's Jasmine Brown. So what went down is basically during the episode of Funky Friday, um, Corey Holcomb was talking about how, you know, most wealthy men, um, they're not faithful. They have options. They have multiple women. And so Cam ends up admitting during the podcast that he has slept with other women besides Jasmine when he's supposed to be in a relationship with Jasmine. So y'all go ahead and check this out real quick. Yeah. You are not finna tell me you up here fucking one person. It's not finna happen. No, 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 no. See, you're trying to deflect back to me. No, I would never do you like that. But, but, I got but respect for no, you. No, no, here. But here. you didn't answer that for a reason. No. Understand this. You didn't answer for a reason. I'm gonna answer mine, and then I want you to answer mine too. I will answer it, brother, and I promise you I won't bullshit with you. Okay. How long are you talking about? What you mean? <laughs> Fucking one person. What do you mean, how long I'm talking about? As long as I've been with Jazz, Jazz has not been the only person that I've had sex with. I don't know your situation. But, I, I, but I'm getting personal. Right, I since, don't know since, your situation. Since you want to get, since you want to take it there. And this is the thing that has- Do you feel uh, like I'm being disrespectful? No. Because I'm not trying to be no, disrespectful. No, no, no. As long as I've been with Jazz, Jazz has not been the only person that I've had sex with. Jazz allows me to speak to her and we are able to have banter. And I hate that I embarrassed her because no woman ever wants to admit that openly. Admit but what? I'm sorry, I want to make That sure. their person has not always been with them. Only. What has allowed us to begin to get closer in a relationship is that I don't feel that she judges my action. She holds me accountable to my action. And she asks me certain things that, yo, how can I do certain things to better so that this won't be a normalcy for you moving forward? I've never had nobody to really understand how I think. So there's been times where, okay, cool, we're keeping it above. Me and Jazz locked in where it's like, yo, are you okay? No, babe, I'm feeling weak. Okay, what does that mean? Now, folks gonna sit up here and say, oh, she's stupid for doing that. She's giving me something that this is my friend, this is my confidant, this is my person that I go to for recharge, this is my place of refuge. I'm going to her and I don't have to hide nothing from her. And when I see the longevity of our relationship, I know that it's working. It's not that I'm taking advantage of her. If anything, she's giving me something that I've never had. All right, so y'all just heard what Cam Newton had to say. So, of course, people started going over to Jasmine's page and basically clowning her, quote-unquote checking on her. Social media had a lot to say about this situation. And so Jasmine finally decided to respond, and this is her response. 
So Jasmine says, child, child, here come the just checking on you DMs. I am fine. Trust me. I know who and what my nigga is. Ain't no secrets or surprises. He can talk to me about anything. Why not just be single if you gon' cheat? I feel you. However, men just be wanting to fuck. Once they do that, they're back to temporarily thinking straight. It's real ghetto out here. I get it. I don't blame y'all for wanting to be single. But if you spend enough time talking to men about this topic, you'll see that it's not as shocking as it may seem, okay? So this is causing a lot of controversy on social media. All types of think pieces are on Twitter right now. But to be honest with you, I'm not shocked with this situation. I say this time and time again. Men who have money and power, they have options. So if you're going into a relationship with somebody who has the status and money of a Cam Newton and you think he's going to be faithful, the joke's on you. And she knows that. She knew getting into the situation the type of man that she had because Cam Newton hasn't been faithful to any of his baby mamas. Matter of fact, the last relationship he was in was because he was cheating and got somebody else pregnant. So Jasmine knows what she's getting out the deal and to Jasmine, that's worth it to her. I mean, let's not forget, this is the same woman who has bragged time and time again that she's uber submissive. And there's nothing wrong with being submissive. You know, most men, especially men with money, they don't want some super feminist, hardcore, you know what I mean? So there's nothing wrong with submitting to your man, but it needs to make sense. What does a submissive woman do for her man? Everything. <laughs> what does that mean? You know, like packing his bag, unpacking his bag, um, just making sure all the things that he wants. And like, I, I pretty much read his mind. So it's like if I know you and I study you, like I know how you are in the morning. I know how you are about midday. I know when you're in this mood, what you need. Like before you can ever ask me for something, I'm already on it. I mean, he's spoiled. And, you know, when I talk to my girlfriends about it, they're like, oh, how are you guys doing? And I'm just like, girl, he's rotten. I'm like, he's spoiled rotten, like he's rotten. But I love that, like I want him to be that. I think my biggest flex is how I treat my man. And I've been known to love people back to health. And sometimes it's very draining, but my love is my superpower. And I used to hate that about myself, but now it's like, I'm just embracing it. Like that's who I am. Like if I love you, I can heal you. It's I your joy. It is my joy. You know, I, I love to see him eating the meal that I cooked. I love seeing him sleep easy. Every night, like clockwork, I scratch this man's back to sleep. And I know when he's asleep because I can tell when his breathing changes. And some people might think that's psychotic, but that's like, I just know that's when I'm like, oh, I can stop now. But I find joy in being your rest, you know? So know what that means. And, and that works for us because he wants what I have to offer. What are you getting from all that you're giving? What are you asking for in return? To me, she just sounds like she's doing all of the submitting and there's nothing in it for her outside of the lifestyle that he's able to provide her. And maybe that's all she wants and maybe she's cool with that. But I'm sorry, the way these STDs are out here floating around, that would make me extremely nervous. But what I find very interesting when these conversations come up you know, Cam is talking about how, you know, Jasmine is giving him something that he's never had. You know, we're locked in. She's a friend. She really understands me. Well, sir, what you're really saying is that this is the first time that you've been in a situationship, because this is not a real relationship to me. Um, this is the first time that you've been in a situationship where you have the opportunity to freely cheat without consequences. That's really what this boils down to. She's the first person who allows me to cheat in peace, okay? She allows me to, you know, sling my schlong all throughout the neighborhood, and there's no consequences. There's no ramifications. So, again, if they like it, I love it. But to me, this situation is sad because what I notice is later on in the conversation, because Corey's talking about all the women that he has. You know, he has a whole roster of women, and, you know, even though he's getting older, he's having to slow down, but he still has multiple women on deck. So Cam asks him, well, are these multiple women? Are they able to have multiple men and go do them? And Corey's answer right away is no, of course not. They're not allowed to do them. You know, if they do them, they're going to be in the, in the rooster house or some shit, he says. <laughs> Y'all go ahead and check this out. Now, a part of the network, so to speak, how many women do you deem is enough for your network? I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm getting older. I'm slowing down. So... 
you know, the, the, um, what happens when you get older physically, you have to slow down. You can't keep up with all of them physically, but I'm here for you if you need my guidance. So with this network, right? Is it okay for the multiple women that you have in your network to also venture off to see other men? Hell no. You see other men, I ain't mad at you, but you get played like the girls who got other roosters in the hen house. I can't never tell you what to do. That, I'm saying as far as it go with that, if you match with other guys, you part of that category. Mm -hmm. I still got a spot for you. I always can find a spot for you. <laughs> but you can't be in that upper echelon. You know what I mean? Let's talk about that. I don't think it happens that often. Like I would say it's very rare. Out of 100 men with power, you might, you might find two that only have one woman. All right, so y'all just heard what Corey had to say. So it's very interesting that what's good for the goose is not good for the gander. And it's always like that. You know, the same thing with these dusty polygamous guys where they want to have all these so-called wives and women. But then when the women say, well, damn, if you want to have all these chicks, let me go ahead and get me a side dude. And that in return is a problem to them because they don't want to think about other men sleeping with their women, but they should be allowed to sling their peen in other women. Like, it's the hypocrisy of it. You know, he's okay with having all these multiple women, and they better just expect the fact that he's going to be a player player from the Himalayas for life, okay? But they better not dip out and have side guys. They can have them, but they're going to get moved down the roster or possibly altogether cut off. Imagine if Jasmine who is a beautiful woman, by the way. Imagine if she was out and about after one of her comedy shows and some fine guy, you know, approaches her, you know, his body's on point, face, you know what I'm saying, looking good. Do you think that Cam Newton honestly would allow Jasmine to have a moment of indiscretion? You think she can just, oops, fall on somebody's dick? I think not. And that's the part that bothers me with these conversations. I'm all for open relationships. Whatever grown folks want to do in their relationships is their grown business. But my thing is what's good for the goose is good for the gander. You want to run around here fucking everything that moves? That's fine. But know that I owe you no faithfulness. I don't owe you anything. Not that I'm going to be out here hoeing. But trust and believe if I find somebody else that catches my eye, it's on and popping. And I'm not going to think twice. You know, so I think that that's the part that I think is just really disingenuous because a lot of these so-called, you know, lax relationships, they're very one-sided. It's just, you know, the man can do whatever, but the woman better not. And I think what Jasmine needs to understand, and I get that, you know, she's a willing participant in this, but to me, I think the problem is she's holding on to a glimmer of hope. She's really hoping that eventually Cam will choose her and Cam will wife her up and be faithful to just her. But the problem is you're letting him have his cake and eat it too, and he's not going to do that because you've allowed him free reign. And it's going to be very hard to rein that back in because he knows that you'll allow him to cheat freely with no consequences. Why would he want to throw that away by marrying you and then having to be beholden to a new set of rules? He's not going to want to do that. And I think it's really sad that a lot of women accept men like this because it's a reflection of how you really feel about yourself. I think the problem is she feels like if she allows him to run the streets, he'll eventually come home and, you know, be faithful to her. But that's not the case because he's done this time and time again to his other baby's mothers, his other relationships, you know, and he wants to be able to cheat in peace. That's his whole thing. He wants to be able to do him, cheat in peace. And I think that's cool that they can discuss this and have an open line of communication about it. But it's troubling because she can't do the same thing. And that's where, to me, that's troubling. That there's one set of rules for Cam Newton, but another set of rules for Jasmine Brown. And to me, she's living in a state of la-la land. She's living in denial about this situation. This man doesn't respect her. He respects the fact that she allows him to do whatever he wants to do. And the problem is Jasmine is currently a placeholder. She's good enough to have his baby. She's good enough to cook dinner, you know, to be his arm candy. But he doesn't see much more than that. Because if he was really taking the steps to wife her up, they would not be going backwards where he can just cheat when he feels like it and all will be forgiven. So Jasmine is a placeholder. And what's gonna happen is that he's still out here looking for his potential wife. 
And again, you heard Corey Holcomb say he's getting older. And so a lot of these guys, once they get older, they're 50 plus, you know, they have bad knees and gout and can't fuck like a rabbit. Then they want to settle down. Then they want a wife, okay? When they can't be out here smashing everything, then they want to settle down and walk down the aisle when they have a bunch of, you know, health issues and, you know, the money ain't money and like it once was. Then they want to settle down. The problem is the women who end up settling down with them are not getting the same men, the same status, the same money a lot of times as if they would have had it when he was younger, you know? So he's going to be looking for a wife eventually to settle down with. She's hoping that it's going to be her, but I don't see it happening for them. She's allowed him too much space to do him. So I don't know. The whole situation is interesting. Like I said, a lot of people are talking about this online, but at the end of the day, these are grown folks. You know, she likes it. I love it. You know, and as long as they're being honest and they know what it is, I can't knock it. But I just hate the fact that relationships like this are extremely one-sided. So with that being said, I leave the conversation up to y'all, tea sippers. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on this entire crazy situation. Once again, with Cam Newton and Corey Holcomb talking about, you know, relationships. And um, how do you guys feel about what Jasmine Brown had to say to everybody who was sliding in her DMs? And how do y'all feel about this relationship in general? Um, is this type of relationship for you? Do you feel like it's a lot of excuses? Also, let's not forget, you know, STDs are real. You know, unplanned pregnancies are real. So I don't know. It's kind of risky living this lifestyle, but to each its own. So go ahead and leave a comment down below. Don't forget to hit the video with a like. Feel free to share the video and I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So, sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely tea TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely tea TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.